Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Relics and welcome back to Alan Wake. Today we are playing episode 3 and yeah, we traveled back in time apparently. So this is three years before everything that's happening in present time. We are at his old apartment it looks like and we are, we actually have to make some coffee. But I kind of want to check out the place a little bit. So this is the coffee maker. Oh, we're going to turn it on quick as well. Coffee's on! Great, thanks! I'll need it if I'm going to finish this by tomorrow. I wonder what she's working on. This is a beautiful place, by the way. Like the apples there. Oh, they got a they got a brand new TV that they're working on. A CC. Never seen that. Never heard of that brand before. But um, I think this is the closet, maybe. Let's see. Open this door. That door is locked. Um, doesn't appear that we can sprint in this room. There's a telephone. This looks like his office. Pick up manuscript page. Interesting. All right. So we're going to read that quick. The sudden stop one and sudden stop two. We'll do the first It's one. true what they say about the fall and the sudden stop at the end. I'd lain here in the snow while the lurid chain of scenes that had led me here kept playing in my head. A rerun of my own private snuff movie. A memory of my corpse. Alone at my own wake. Thinking in metaphors again. The femme fatale was gone. Only a sour taste remained of the kiss that killed me. Okay, so... This was a late goodbye. Thirteen years after I'd gotten my revenge, it had finally caught up with me. It had been a long time to bear the pain. My blood painted the snow red. A gruesome slushy dissolved all the scattered painkillers and leisurely dripped down to the sewer mingling with the bile of the city becoming one with it. I can see them now, my wife and my baby. Honey, I'm home. Uh, Alan Wake returned to Asunder. What I can't forget, Alex Casey, the things that I want, the fall of Casey. Who's Alex Casey? Okay, so that's our office. Oh, that's a cool picture right there. That's awesome. So... It looks like that was like, um, kind of like the manuscripts we picked up in the last episode. And those manuscripts actually came out to be like real life. So I'm curious to see if like he has a child. Because he was talking about having a baby, it sounded like. Painkillers. Oh, that, I think I saw something like, that was in the uh, manuscript, I think. Painkillers, if that's painkillers. Oh, Jesus. That is dark. No, no, we don't want any of that. Dude, that gave me shivers. I want to stay in the vortex. The continuing freezing rain and heavy snowfall have necessitated a winter storm warning in the entire tri-state area. People are advised to stay indoors as many roadways are already closed. And city officials are not expecting snow crews to keep up with the weather. We're now on the third day of the blizzard, and the weather is not expected to clear up anytime soon. That's not good. All right, we looked at our office, now it's time to go and talk to our wife. Oh, hey, I just finished those cover mock-ups. They're on your desk. Tell me what you think. No kidding. I didn't think you'd get them done this quickly. On occasion, I can perform all sorts of miracles, my dear. Oh, really? Well, you seemed to think so last night. Damn! Child-friendly content. Um, what mock-ups is she talking about? Examine cover mock-ups. Uh, maybe they're in our office. That might have been what I saw on the next screen right here. Yep. Oh, These look really good. Oh, sure, until Barry gets his hands on them. Which, by the way, will happen over my dead body. The last time was the last time. Oh, and speaking of Barry, he called. <gasps> what the? Alan? Alan, please check the fuse box. Jesus. I'm right here. I'm on it, honey. Please serious? hurry. I'm right here, baby. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just get the lights back on. Now, please. Where the hell is it? Right there by the door? It is, yeah. Use. Turn this on. Honey, it's a power outage. I I've got the flashlight. Okay. Oh, my God. Dude, I just started, bro. Give me a Hi. break. You okay? I'm sorry. I just... it just really spooked me. 
Don't worry. We'll just break out the candles. Okay. I know it's stupid, but it's just... Especially when I'm not prepared for it, you know? It gets to me. I love you. Tell me a story, Ryder. Okay. <clears throat> I used to have these nightmares when I was a kid. The dark really spooked me, too. When it got really bad, my mom gave me this old light switch. She called it the clicker. The clicker, huh? Yeah. If I ever got scared of the dark, I could just flip the switch and a magic light would scare the monsters away. Oh, sure. Here it is. Alan. Maybe it'll help you. <laughs> yeah, nice story, writer boy. You made that up right now, didn't you? No, no. <laughs> Seriously. I love you. Even if you are a liar. Thanks for this. Oh, that's sweet. Come on. Hmm. So good. What do you feel, Mr. Wake? Any nausea, disorientation, anything like that? Mr. Wake, how are you feeling? I'm okay. My head's fine. I had to lie about my headache and memory loss. He'd send me to a hospital for tests. I couldn't leave without Alice. Hmm, very well. Um, I don't think you have a concussion, but you've obviously been through quite a shock. You should take it easy for a couple of days. Thanks. Well then, Mr. Wake, we're done here. If the pain gets any worse or you experience any other symptoms, you should come see me. I'll let you get on with it then. Sarah, uh, Sheriff Breaker, is waiting for you. She's very good at her job. I'm sure she can locate your wife in no time. Doc Nelson was the image of a small town doctor. Sheriff Breaker had called him to the station to take a look at the cut in my head. Fish. I I'm sorry you had to cut your morning fishing short for this, Doc. Oh, she's a beauty, ain't she? Not the biggest I ever caught, if you can believe that coming from an old fisherman like me. But she's right up there. Now, she's a largemouth bass, which is what you're after if you prefer a lure. Now, if you want either trout or salmon, on the other hand, then it's fly fishing for you. Um, you a fishing man, Mr. Wake? Oh, doesn't really matter, I suppose. But it can be very relaxing out there. You can't get me off the water this time of year. Closest thing to heaven. Well, that's nice. Fun fact, I actually had an old friend who's- I'll take your word for it, Doc. Talk to Sarah. What is that noise? Clicking. Wow, this is a big police office. It's that lady again. Thank you for testing the lights, Miss Weaver. Everything seems to be fine. I don't have the luxury of being complacent, Deputy Grant. The bulbs will need changing soon. You can't change them in the dark. I'll be sure to take care of it, Miss Weaver. Have a nice day now. Very good. I'll come back later on to remind you, just in case. That lady is interesting. Okay, so that's the meeting room. Um, what is this? I can't open it. Mr. Wake, the sheriff is waiting for you in her office down the corridor. Alrighty. That was Cynthia Weaver. I guess you can call her the town eccentric. She used to be the editor of the local newspaper, but she's focused on um, well, other things these days. Yeah. She'd fit right in where I come from. Seems like she knows about as much as we do, honestly. Yeah, it's uh, Mulligan here. I'm at Stucky's gas station with Whoa. Thornton. There's no sign of him. Over. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, this is Thornton. Look, we've located the brake float. It's here. That's some good news, right? Stucky was supposed to be driving it at the rehearsal today. Over. Oh, give me that. Mulligan here. Looks like someone really thrashed the garage. Over. Okay, roger that, guys. Keep looking for Stucky. Jane's out. Okay, well, we killed Stucky, so they're not gonna find him. Alice sees a shadow. Alice looked through the viewfinder, lining up the shot. Cauldron Lake was breathtaking. Something caught her eye. A figure standing in the shadows behind the cabin, 
like a thin woman in a black dress. She lowered the camera and looked again. No one there. Just a collection of bushes that looked vaguely human-shaped. She shook her head and laughed. Oh my god, dude. I don't want to see that. This game gives me so much shivers, dude. Alright. Well... The sheriff wants to see you in her office, Mr. Wake. I'm aware. Alright, so that's gonna be down this way. Read. Right here. Richard... Okay, missing. Richard Bow, Bruce Dansky, Jacob Miller. On a camping trip overdue, haven't been in, a con in contact. If you have seen them or know their whereabouts, please call 555-9932. Thank you. Alright. Have you seen these men? Are these people that I killed? I hope not. We killed a lot of bad guys in the last episode. If you can oh, the fuse box, dude. The power better not go out. Just have bad fuse. Come in, Mr. Wake. Your phone's on the desk. The battery was dead. It's charged now. Pick up stuff. Have you started looking for my wife yet? My men are already on it. Now, can you tell me what happened? I'm not sure. I can't remember. We were arguing. I walked out of the cabin. The cabin on Cauldron Lake? How did you end up at Stucky's gas station? I wanted to tell her what had happened last night, but I couldn't. She'd lock me up. Excuse me. I need to take this. Hello? Alice, please help me. Alice? Stop talking to the law. You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. Who is this? Go to the back lot. There's a hole in the fence on the left. Look inside the junker. I left a little something there to convince you we're all on the same page here. After you ditch the cops, you're gonna meet me in Elderwood National Park. There's a spot called Lover's Peak. Midnight. Don't do nothing stupid, pal. For watching you. Mr. Wade, can I help you with anything? I need to get some air. The sheriff said I could go out back. Of course, Mr. Wake. I couldn't go anywhere yet. I had to play along with the caller. Alice's life was at stake. I thought he'd quit drinking for good. Hey, hey, Mr. Hey, can you turn the light? The light's on. The deputies, they won't, they don't understand. They won't listen to me. I, I need it to be bright in here. That's so scary. Pick up the the dark presence in the diner. In spite of its human mask, to describe the dark would have implied human qualities on something decidedly inhuman. Nonetheless, it found the one spot in the diner that was dark enough. Some light spilled into the corridor, ravaging it. But it took the pain. Horrible as it was, the writer would soon fix that. He would be coming to the one place where it still had power. Hey! 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 Hey, you! Can you help me? Can you turn the lights on? Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, you're all right. You're a good guy. Don't let anybody tell you different. Well, I appreciate you know, that. I should. Story time's over. The early morning light hurt my eyes and made my head ache. The man on the phone had said, go through the fence on the left. Folks, it's been another long night, and uh, it's about time for me to sign off for a while. God knows I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> uh, just one more item before I go. It's been a busy night for the sheriff's department. We've had a few broken windows, even a report of shots fired on Main Street. Deputies Mulligan and Thorn had to deal with two intoxicated young men who were celebrating the completion of their Deer Fest float. Now, folks, we get this every year. I know it's exciting that the big day is almost here, but let's save it for the party and leave the gunplay for the shooting competition, huh? There's no point in getting all worked up yet. The caller had told me to find a hole in the fence behind the police station. There was something for me in an abandoned car.
wake at Lover's Peak. The kidnapper fired his gun one last time, and the shadow vent at the dark and come from. See? Nothing to it, Wake. The thought of Alice in his hands was revolting. We stood on the wooden platform of Lover's Peak, the waterfall on the mountain behind us, the lights of the radio mast blinking red in the heights above. I fought with the urge to take a swing, force myself to speak. Let's cut the act now. Where's my wife? Didn't he say that his wife was in the guy's hands? I'm confused. Alice's driver's license had been placed on the front seat. The caller meant business. Oh, jeez. Barry? Ow! Ow! Thank God! Where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for a week, you and Alice. Oh, I've been worried sick. I flew out yesterday. I'm here, here in Bright Falls. Barry, listen to me. I'm at the sheriff's station. Come and get me. I can't talk now. Ow! What the hell is going on? I had to get the sheriff to let me go. I needed to get to Elderwood National Park to meet Alice's kidnappers. We get to meet Barry now. That's exciting. Exit the sheriff's station. Alright. Ooh, let's see how our buddy's doing. Poor man. What the hell? The writer is a light that reveals the world's story from this nothingness. The way a sculptor carves a statue from a block of granite. If I stop, the world I'm making dies. Darkness will reclaim it. It's a long, hard journey into the dark. Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that, or I'll lose it. The dread lingers at the edge of perception. I'll push on. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. What the hell was that? And the TV's on fire. Jesus. Can I turn on the lights? Switch lights. We're gonna leave that on. I just wanted to see the Marvelous, Sarah. I just wanted to settle all the damage the Anderson brothers might have inadvertently caused on their recent and regrettable little outing. Are you feeling any better, Mr. Wake? I'd like to leave. Am I free to go? Well, we still need to talk about- Am I under arrest? No, of course not. But I need to know where you'll be staying so I can get in touch with you. I'd avoid the motel. The Majestic is known for the cabins and ice, though. That sounds perfect. I'm Dr. Emile Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Did you talk to my wife? I had the pleasure of discussing your situation with her on several occasions. Did you set something up with her? I invited her here. My clinic is a place where... Oh! Hey! Oh my! Take it easy. There's me. Nobody move! Get your hands off of my client! Who are you? I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. If you have business with Mr. Wake, you talk to me. You yokels won't know what hit you once I sick my your asses. No harm done, Sarah. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Mr. Wake, my offer still stands. Screw you. Get me out of here. <sighs> <laughs> Let's go, dude. That was awesome. What the hell's that about, Al? We don't need a replay of that thing with the paparazzi. I thought they were gonna lock you up. I'm digging Barry already, dude. He means business. I had to talk to someone. I told Barry everything. Certifiable. But when he heard about the manuscript, I had him. The fact that I'd written something, even if I couldn't remember it, was enough for him. He smelled money. And he believed that Alice had been kidnapped. Anything beyond that was another story. I had a midnight appointment with the kidnapper in a place called Lover's Peak, somewhere in Elderwood National Park. The plan was to rent a cabin. I don't like it, Al. I don't like any of it. It's not good. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of good. Mr. Wake! Barry, you found him! Hi, Rose. Oh, wow. I was just thinking about you, too. Great. I was just bringing Rusty some coffee. He's on the balcony, looking after Max. Poor thing. I really need to go. Great to see you again, Mr. Wake. Later! What an airhead. Jeez, Mr. Takes a Swing at everybody. This is not her fault. She's a very nice girl and, more importantly, a fan. Yeah, he's got a plan. Can't unlock that door. Can't unlock that door. We're just exploring. I'd come here to rent a cabin, where I could wait till midnight. Read. The skeleton of a Colombian mammoth, Mammothus columbi, 
This specimen, estimated, estimated to be 14,000 years old, was recovered from the La Brea tar pits in 1981. It was donated to the Elderwood National Park in 1998 when the Columbian mammoth became Washington State fossil, named Bucktooth Charlie. It has since become the park's official mascot. All right then. So this is like a museum type of place? Seriously, Al, what you were saying in the car, just listen to yourself. What, you shot a guy and his body just disappeared? Wait here. Easy there, boy. I'm almost done. Hey, Rusty, right? You rent cabins. Oh, Mr. Wake. I'd shake your hand, but mine are kind of full here. Actually, I'm sorry about this. Would you mind grabbing the registration form from the desk? It's just across from Bucktooth Charlie. Okay, sure. <laughs> what was the last time you slept? What, are you high? Have you been drinking? No! Look, Barry, I'm missing a week! And someone's got Alice! And everything's just... Do you understand what it sounds like when you say stuff like that? Don't get me wrong, it's a good story, could be a bestseller. But when you start confusing fiction with reality, you're buying yourself a ticket to the funny farm! Seriously, Al, you can't just go and meet a kidnapper. Those situations always end up in disaster. You gotta talk to the cops. She's my wife, and it's my call. Can we talk about this later? No. This whole thing is... Listen. Wait here. Hit your head. I think this is the form you wanted. And here are the keys. Okay, you're all set, Mr. Wake. Glad to have you staying here. Thanks. Can you tell me how to get to Lover's Peak? Oh, sure. It's at the end of the nature trail. Just follow the paths, you'll get to it eventually. It's an easy walk. Nice spot. If you try to pull a joke on me, freak me out, it's working. Ha <laughs> ha, let's have a laugh on Barry. Well, you had me going there real funny, Al. You can quit it now. Look, Al, you're asking me to believe that you shot a dude who went poof into thin air. A guy who was bulletproof until you pointed a flashlight at him. You hear the people who end up spending time in padded rooms, strapped to their beds, wearing white shirts with too long tangled up sleeves, and eating a healthy diet of pills. Al, you make cruel jokes about people who believe that kind of stuff. You're the skeptic. Hmm. Well, that's very supportive. It's just crazy talk, Al. Al. Al? You should go to the sheriff or call the FBI. Damn it, Barry. They'll kill her. This is not a goddamn debate, <gasps> Barry. <gasps> I'm going to Lover's Peak. He said to cut to do to help, and I'll do it. You stay here, and if I'm not back by morning, call the cavalry. <gasps> Barry's a nice guy. <gasps> Just be careful with the natives, Al. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist, or it'll be deliverance all over again. Achoo! Bless you. This is a nice cabin. It's beautiful, actually. Batteries. Okay, now we know that we're getting into it. Anything here? Nope. How can you give us the keys to a cabin but not allow us to unlock all the doors? Switch lights. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Jesus. I didn't know that they were on. It's not that bright. The flashlight's on. Ooh, you know that we're getting knee deep into something. Right now. Okay, so we can't go out that way. We can only go out this way. Right? Wow. That... I gotta say, this, like, picture is so beautiful. Like, just the way that the game looks all the time. It gives you that, like, sense of mysteriousness. Like, the fog and all of it. It's crazy. Okay, we can now come over here quick to see if there's anything over here that's useful. We go up here. There's another coffee thermos. We're really killing it with these, um, collection- or collectibles. Okay, we don't need the grudge coming out of there. I'd be terrible. Okay. Also, 
disregard this if you guys didn't hear anything, but I do have uh, children over right now from my sister-in-law's side, so uh, if you guys can hear them screaming in the background, they're upstairs, I'll but I can hear Al. So I'll hold you down hear. the fort. I'll be with you in spirit every step of the way, Al. Locking the door now. Alright, but anyways, if you guys can hear them, I apologize. We'll be taking care of that situation soon, but for now, we're just gonna have to deal with it. You guys can't hear anything? That's wonderful. We can just go back to it. Barry doubts wakes sanity. Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved an almost frightening intensity. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode and was now totally disconnected from reality. It's got a Barry. Yeah, I can totally understand that. Barry had the keys to the car he rented. It wasn't a long walk to the visitor center, and it wouldn't be any use to me in the forest. So we can't take the car. Wonderful. Okay, well, we've got our gun. We've I knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. These people had caught in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them, and they had Alice. There's a light over there. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why is there, was there a bird inside of the trash can? Yeah, there's nothing over there. Um, I feel like we should go into this house, but I don't think it's a good idea. But we're gonna do it anyways. Yep, we can go into the house. Of course we can. That's never a good sign if you have to pick up anything. What? Dude, I thought I saw a shadow outside of the window. Oh my god. Welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your Deerfest plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seem to manage. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. No plan. Really, just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly that. But I'm gonna check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> uh, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a large mouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? Well, considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. That is a big drop, dude. It's, it's cool to have like a cliffside house like this though. It's beautiful in the morning and at night. Quite this little bridge there. All right. Why did the lights go out at the one house that I need to go into the most? What the hell, dude? Oh, come on, bro. Okay. 
does it say? Elderwood National Trail, Moonshine Cave, Lover's Peak are all this way, but unfortunately we have to go in here first. Okay, we can't go on the trailer. And we have to go inside of the house. And it seems like the power went out. Why? I'm not feeling that, dude. Open. There's nothing in here. Wonderful. What the heck? No, dude, I don't want to click on it. Oh my god. Use. Crime and punishment. The cancer and cure of civilization. But some crimes are impossible to punish. Especially in Night Springs. Tonight's episode. The Man in the Mirror. He's inside, Agent. He's a weird one. So, you're confessing to killing that guy, huh? Why? And it coming? Yeah, but why would you do that? I mean, you're a nice guy. Normal. Took a kid to a soccer game. So how come at the game, you pick a guy and, quoting from the arresting officer's report here, assault the victim's head area repeatedly with the weapon of choice being a pair of bare fists? Wow. That sentence really flows, huh? Maybe you're not the literary type. Okay, so you mess him up. But why? Who was that guy? We couldn't ID him. Why would a guy like you do him like that? I didn't like his face. Well, you must have hated it, because you really went to town there. I mean, there's no way to tell what he looked like. No ID on him either. That must be difficult. But then we ran the fingerprints. Got a match. Your prints. Identical. Huh, how about that? Your son said you were wearing a white shirt when you took him to the game. But the white shirt is on the dead guy. It's plenty red now. You won't get away with this. Do you really think that's in any way relevant to me? I had plenty of time to talk to my boy before the cops arrived, you know? He won't stop screaming, am I right? You think he's ever gonna be okay? <laughs> I left my bar. Believe me. You, you bastard. What? Whoa. You gonna shoot me? What's the point? I'm going to prison. You got me. I... I don't understand any of this. And you never... Don't worry. Maybe you'll see me again, Agent. Maybe in the mirror. What are you looking over there for? Stay till watching the TV, dude. Oh, now we got the weird camera. Springs, dude. I have so much chills. I don't know exactly what those videos on TV are meant to be. Maybe just speakers. I don't know if they have anything to do with the story. Just an abandoned Hiking. Checkpoint reached. Pick up manuscript. Now, these pages, usually, when we're doing an actual mission like this in the woods, they usually tell us what's going to happen before it actually happens. Rusty dying. Oh. The air in the visitor center was heavy with an awful smell, as if some rotten, drowned thing had crawled up from its grave. Rusty kept coughing blood. My eyes were drawn to the twisted shape of his broken leg. The attack had been vicious. Max whined in his cage. Rusty's eyes were wild with fear and terror. He gasped. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. What do you mean it happened? Did the dog uh, attack Rusty? Visitor center. Oh, what the, the vision hell? left me weak. This was no head injury. Anybody? 
It looks like our cabin. Mr. Wake? <laughs> oh, hell. It happened. Just the way it was on that page. I found. Game true. It knew. So dark. It'll come back for me. You must... The lights. In the office. I have the key. Okay, Rusty. Hang on. I'll be right back. Whatever did this couldn't be far. On a page from the manuscript, it would help me understand what had happened. Get the lights on. Okay, let's see if we can find any plant around. Why don't we just give him the first aid that's right there, dude? That's still locked. So this is the main office that we were at when we came to grab the keys. Interesting. Can we open these doors? Just gotta make sure. The only way to make sure that Rusty was safe was to get the power running and the lights back on. Okay. Rusty attacked by the darker... The visitor center was sturdy, but the impact turned the front of the building into splinters. Rusty was thrown across the lobby like a rag doll and hit the far wall hard. It didn't hurt until he tried to move and saw his leg bend the wrong way, felt the broken ribs stabbing him on the inside. Rusty howled in pain and fear, suddenly afraid to die alone. Rusty attacked by- wait, no. <sighs> gotta pick it up. There you go. Wake reaches a safe heaven of- At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The axe splintered the trunk of a tree. I stumbled into the pool of bright light. My lungs burned. I was too exhausted to move. I tensed as I waited for the killing blow, but it never came. I raised my head. Nothing moved in the darkness beyond. For the moment, bathed in the cold light, I was safe. Yep, that's how that works. Okay, we can't go through there, so we have to go over here. Maybe this is how we turn on the lights? Yep. I was too late. Snit destroyed the circuit breaker. There was no way to get the lights back on. that look like liquid darkness. Something had torn Please a mammoth-sized hole in the wall. <laughs> Fishing is only Who perches a park? Fishing. License! No bay! Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 Never! oh, 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 oh,
Yes, we are. What? What the hell was that? I saw it from the window. I saw it. I saw something. Forget about it, Barry. It's just me going crazy. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You're not crazy. I wish you were crazy, but you're not crazy. Ow, be careful. Stay in the cabin. Don't open the door for anyone. I mean it. I really hope Barry's okay. Rusty's final thoughts. In that last instant of consciousness, Rusty thought about Rose. He was older than she was. Rose was barely out of her teens. But she made him feel young and forget what a train wreck his long dead marriage had been. He still wore the ring. He'd been waiting for her to tell him to take it off. Now she never would. Sees the torch symbol. I turn the corner, afraid of what the flashlight's beam might reveal. Suddenly, a roughly painted symbol of a torch glowed in the light. Behind it, hidden by a rock, sat a battered metal trunk. It was here for a reason. Packed with supplies, batteries, flares, ammo. Things you need to make it through the darkness of the night. Something left behind by someone who knew what I knew. And more. Wow, maybe it's that old lady. But, um has been leaving the lights on and you know taking care of stuff and making sure that it's all done. If that made any sense. The woman who was at the police station who wanted us to uh, change the light bulbs. Maybe it's her. She seems to know a lot. Bear alerts. Oh, for Christ. It's 
so yep. I saw you, bro. Get out of the bushes. Oh, there's mo- Oh, holy Christ! Oh, crap, dude. Oh my god, there's so many. Holy time to go on a run, big boy. Oh, we're dead. I don't think we can survive. But... No, we're dead. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Okay, we're gonna have to pull out the shotgun here. I don't know how they expect to survive without shotgun. I'm gonna help at all. That's the only thing I can think of. Looks like there's supposed to be a note right there, but I guess that's just a glitch. Pick up manuscript page. Nighting, nighting ales. Agent Nightingale didn't want to be in Bright Falls. These little communities revolted him, and he didn't like the trees or the coffee. He now knew that impossible horrors lurked behind the storefronts and smiles. He desperately wanted to turn the car around and just drive until he passed out or ran out of road and booze. But he had a job to do. He had a writer to catch, at any cost. He had a writer to catch? That doesn't sound nice. Oh, it's one of those things. Because I doubt that this thing is just an open
her many Shit. Flashlights, kid stuff. The flares will keep the bastards away. I used my first flare by accident, so I'm, I haven't had one since. You can see them too? Hell, of course I see them. Come on, we gotta move. Why? <laughs> because that's the way the story goes. Yeah, but. Let's move! I lost my gun back there. Oh, I've got a gun. Just keep that light steady on him. It took a moment. But then, I recognized him. He'd been on the ferry when I first arrived here with Alice. He knew my name. We were headed in the direction of Lover's Peak. There was no way this was a coincidence. He was the kidnapper. Come on, Wake! You better keep up! You set him up, and I'll knock him down, Wake! from the emergency box to hold them off while I get these boards off. Give me the gun. Yeah, <laughs> no can do, Wake. Are you kidding? Give me the gun! No time for back call. Get ready. They'll be on us soon. Thomas, just get ready with our weapon. This is it, Wake. The last stand. There's more players here. Get ready. We fight them as long as they keep coming. Give me the goddamn gun! They're coming! That's not how this goes. Get with the program, Wake.
Let's right. cut the act now. Where's my wife? I knew you were going to say that. I read it all before. You're a hell of a writer. Congratulations. You're going to bring about something glorious and terrible once we get you some uh, proper editorial control. What the hell are you talking about? Where's Alice? I want the entire manuscript, or she's going to suffer bad. You touch her all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that one's just brilliant. Good job, Alan. That flashlight is broken. Unless that was the gun that you saw. You're gonna give me the manuscript or you'll be hurry! No! Come back here! I swear I'll kill you if you hurt Alice! Do you hear me? Come back here! He had Alice, and he wanted the manuscript because he thought it held some magical power but I had no manuscript to give him. I had to get back to Barry and figure out my next move. Alice's fear of the dark. On more than one occasion, Alice had tried to explain to me how it felt to be afraid of the dark. To her, darkness wasn't simply the absence of light, but something more tangible than that. It was something you could touch and feel. Worse than that, it was something with a mind of its own, something malicious and malign. For her, things changed when they were wrapped in darkness. They turned into something else, something foreign, and nothing was safe or innocent anymore. I'd never really understood what she meant until now. All right, guys. Well, I think we're going to end the episode here. It was a little bit of a weird ending to this episode, honestly. We found the kidnapper. We helped him fight off the darkness, and now we're chasing him because he wants our secret powers, apparently. We don't have any. It's, it's kind of weird, but next episode we gotta make it through the forest, and we gotta get closer and closer to finding Alice. I think we actually have to make it through the woods to find Barry. He said. So, yeah. I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you are new with the bell turned on, because I try and post daily videos every single week, and you guys do not want to miss out. Episode two of The Long Dark actually just went live today, and this video will go up later this afternoon. So if you guys are excited for another one, make sure to comment down below that you guys want to see another video. And I still am running that goal of 10 likes per video. If we can hit that, then I will be doing this entire game over again in the Nightmare series. And I'm not going to be like playing the whole game through, but I'm going to be taking the scariest moments of the game and then putting them into a compilation video. So probably it's probably going to take me, honestly, a week to make that video. If you guys want to see it, make sure to hit that like button. Let's try and get 10 likes for this video past two videos and all the videos up to this point so yeah thank you guys so much for all your support and i'll see you guys in the next one peace